Hey everyone, so today we're going to learn about how to get started with your own offline league and how to just jump right into it and do everything that you need to do to get yourself set up to have a fun offline experience. Okay, what I like to do is go to Add-on Central, go over to the 2014 All-in-One Mod. I've already downloaded it, but if you haven't, you'll see it looks like these where it's just a bunch of download links. You click Download, it'll automatically download it. You click Install, like you see right here, it'll be a big Install button. You hit install, it'll automatically install it to where it's got to go. And then when it's done, you don't have to do anything else, you just hit close. And then you hit new standard game, it'll bring up a bunch of options, but I think that for the majority of players, we usually just start up with the major American League. You hit start game, a little dialogue will pop up, it'll ask you to put in your name and the name of the manager, and which team you want to pick, you then pick whatever team you want. I'm not going to do that because I already made one, so for the sake of time purposes, I'm just going to go straight here into the game. Alright, and if it doesn't take you straight to this menu right here, you can just click this button right here. It'll bring you to the manager's office. The first thing you want to do is go to your manager settings. Now from there, you look at your team control settings, and you want to look at minor league signings and releases, the minor league promotions and promotions, and the lineups, depth, chart, and pitching. And I change all of this to my minor league managers because it's just too much micromanagement management for me to actually worry about the minor leagues and all of that because there are a lot of levels. So, another thing that I look at is the exit autoplay. I leave all of this unchecked. Normally, it'll be checked about, look like that. But I leave all of this unchecked because when I'm auto-playing, I like to simulate months at a time. And I don't like for it to be interrupted. Right here you can choose what you want, what kind of emails you want. It'll keep you updated about the rest of your league. I just leave everything up and going. All the boxes checked. Now after you've set this all up the way you want it to do, you can go over to Game, Game Settings. And then you check, take a look at the Global Settings. Now I don't like playing with Scouting, and I don't like playing with Coaches. So I leave those boxes unchecked. Another thing that I changed is the player rating scale. There's a lot of options, but my favorite is the 1 to 5, but I also like 20 to 80, because 20 to 80 is the scale that actual scouts in real life use to judge their prospects. The other player rating scale is stuff for your position ratings, the fielding ratings, and speed, base running, and stealing. I like to put that on 1 to 10. For everything else, it's pretty self-explanatory. Show ratings above max, um, I leave that as no cutoff, because show ratings above max is when sometimes players go above their potential for a short period of time. They can really peak above their potential, and it doesn't last long, but I don't want to know. I like to just not know about that. And everything else is self-explanatory, the show potential less than actual. Something that I think a lot of people do is overall rating based on all players and not positions. Well, what I do with this is I leave it, I leave it as is, because I like it when my overall rating, which is either stars or the 20 to 80 values, it's basically just stars. I think everyone uses stars. I like to leave it as the stars are based on the position. So if I have a third baseman and he's the best third baseman, he's going to be a five star. So I like to know that in correlation to everyone, to every other third baseman in the league, my third baseman's either a five star, one star, three and a half star. It's relative to how well they are at that position. If you check this box, it'll be relative to how they compare to everyone in the league. So it's not just your position. One thing that I do also recommend is going to the trading AI settings right here in the AI settings tab. You go to trading difficulty. And it's normally at average. I like to put it on very hard because otherwise it's easy to manipulate. And it's very tempting to do so. From there, I go to League Settings. And I go to Reset Functions, Reset All Injuries and DL Status, Operation Complete. Okay. I like to do this because when you start a game, they have real-life injuries as of opening day. And I like to get a good clean slate so I know what I'm working with. Now from here, I go to the rules, and I leave everything else pretty much the same. I do check the Disable Rights or Refuse Minor League Assignment, because sometimes veterans refuse to go to the minor leagues, and it's not realistic, and I don't want that to play like that. 
And the 10-5 rule, veterans have right to veto trades, I don't have good experience with that. Uh, most veterans, even if they're very, very unhappy with their low morale, they refuse to be traded. So I don't understand that, and I just don't play with it on. I also allow the trading of recently drafted players and draft pick trading. In real life, I think that you have to wait nine months to, draft, to trade a drafted player, but for purposes of my own offline league, I like to play without having to wait. You can change all of these things regarding the draft and all that. I don't. And then as far as options go, I like to go to the dynamically evolving league and uncheck all of these boxes because I don't want any of this to change, but I do like expansion teams, team relocation, and team nickname changes. The more or less offense and more or less pitching, those are just errors of baseball that the league will automatically put itself through. So there's obviously errors with more or less offense and errors with more or less pitching. You can also change the name of the awards. So for Pitcher of the Year, you can change to Cy Young. It doesn't come like that, so you have to manually change those. Um, another one is the force start on certain weekdays. Auto adjust if matching XML schedules found. This is just really the game comes with one schedule that's loaded for the first season. There may be more seasons. I don't know how many are loaded into that schedule, but I think it's just the first season. It's the actual schedule, and normally this is going to be season start date the 31st of March, and it's going to force start on the Saturday, but I like to have it start on the 1st April, and I don't care which weekday it is, so that's what I do right there. Everything else I leave alone. You can take the time to go through and look at all this stuff and change it as you see fit, but I don't ever mess with that. Now what I will do is I'll go here to my team home page, and then I'll go straight to my strategy. And then I'll reset that strategy because the game has the AI do team strategies before you start it up. So you're going to have um, a, a strategy for a team that you didn't set. So I like to reset strategy. And then from there, I go to copy strategy to all times and situations. So I now have all times and situations. The strategy is the same. It's a clean slate. And then I can edit it to as I see fit. I don't like messing with these. I usually only hook my starting pitchers pretty quickly. And then I use one strategy for all times and situations. So what I do is I go to set my strategy, and then from there I go to copy current strategy to all times and situations, and now no matter what the time is, and no matter what the situation is, my strategy is always the same. Now the reason that I do this is because this is a lot of strategies, and I don't care to mess with that enough. I like to just have one set strategy that works for all times and situations. So if you're like me, and you just want one strategy that applies to all situations, this is what we do. We go to copy current strategy to all times and situations, and then we're set. I don't like to mess with these. I just leave them alone. And from there, I will go to my team. And I already know the Yankees lineup pretty well. I'm a Yankees fan in real life, so I already know the whole farm system and what our lineup consists of. So what I will do is I'll go to Jacoby Ellsbury, Available Actions, Set Game Strategy, and I will make him a pretty aggressive base runner and steal bases more frequently. I'll also do the same with Brett Gardner because I know that he can do it. Whoops. Available actions, set game strategy, same thing. Make them aggressive, running the base pass, and all of that. Now from here, I'll usually go check out my lineup and then change it as I see fit. But I'm okay with looking at this lineup and ending the season with it. So I'm going to look at my pitching staff. It all looks good to me. And then from there, I'll go to player info, minor league system report. I'll get a good look at my minor leagues. I already know a good bit about the Yankees farm system. So I don't need to dive into this too much. And then I will look at the top prospects just to get a good idea of what I've got going on in my minors. Now from here, this is basically all you need to do to start simulating. You're ready to go now. But if you took over a team and you want to sign some free agents, what you can do is go to the two errors, that's the league transaction menu, go to the free agents, and from them you can set filters to search for a free agent that says maybe a power of at least 60. And then hit OK. And now there are now people with, these are all the free agents with power of at least 60. So if you need a first baseman, maybe you'd sign Kendrys Morales or something like that. And that's just about all you need to do to get yourself up and started with the 
pretty good basis of how you want your offline league to go. You can change everything as you go, and that's about it for this tutorial. I guess we can go over the sidebar, since that's a good thing to explain while we're at it. If you start off with the uppermost right icon on the side sidebar, that's going to be your manager homepage. It'll just take you to this screen where there are notes and tasks. This is pretty much the most important part of the manager homepage. Everything else you can find and other screens but you can also edit the way that you see this by just clicking these arrows and you can change it to whatever you want it to be changed to it's a pretty customizable screen and it actually is pretty handy then from here you can go to your emails and this is your shortlist shortlist is like targeted players that you want to keep tabs on it's like keeping notes on certain players so if I were to go to free agency and then click Kendry's Morales. I go to Available Actions, Shortlist Player, and Kendry's Morales is now in my shortlist. So it's like I'll be able to track them. Okay. This will take you to your manager settings. Uh, this will take you to the Major League homepage. This is your whole league homepage. So if you are in a fictional league as well and there's only one league, this will show the whole league just as this shows the entire MLB. It's not just AL and it's not just NL. It's everything. If you're in a fictional league that has multiple leagues, like an association, then it'll only show one league. But for the AL and the NL, those are sub-leagues and they're part of the major league. So this will show everything. Alright, then from here you can go to your league standings. From here, this is your league newspaper. It's a pretty cool format where all of the news with all the teams shows up in a newspaper format. It's really cool. This is your personal team. It's basically your email, same exact thing. This will take you to the league events page, which is just a schedule of the entire season of all the events that are going to happen all the way up from opening day to the playoffs. It's nice to look at to know that you know when things are going to happen, but these events are also right here if you go to play, which is the autoplay button. This will take you to your league leaders. There aren't any because I haven't played any games yet. This is the scores page. This is the league transactions page. And this right here is the game settings. Now this is your team home page. And we've done this earlier where you go to your pitching staff, your lineups. Another a good idea is to go check your seven day lineups and make sure that you have that on the correct setting. Because if you use seven day lineups and you fill out all these lineups just to figure out that this is not checked on, so it has to be yes if you are using it, and make sure to know if you're not using it, it could really mess up your lineups for the season if you have it on the wrong setting. Now, this is your internal organization transaction, so basically just disabled this, the designated for assignment, all of your minor league promotions you can just drag and drop. It's really convenient. This is your 40 man. You can do all kinds of transactions within your organization in this screen and you can also hit available actions and have the AI set up your, your organization and your lineups and everything from the majors all the way down to the minors or you can just have them set up the complete minor league system. If you have it checked in your manager settings like I do then you won't have to worry about it. It'll do all that automatically. And this right here is your team finance page your front office page but it takes you to the finances page and then from here you can look at all of your budget and your ticket prices you can look at the advanced stats which is just a lot of your payroll information and your attendance per game and how relative it is to last season whether it increased or decreased and you can look at all of your salaries for your players and everything and the Yankees have a huge payroll as you can tell this is possible free agents and I'm going to clear that filter because that was the free agent filter that we made earlier. But these are all your possible free agents. And I believe, yeah, if you hit available actions and click offer all minor league free agents, minor league contract extensions, it'll offer everybody that the extension for you. But again, if you have it set up here, as I do, then your minor league managers will automatically take care of that for you. And last but not least, the settings for your team. You can change the name, the abbreviation, the nickname, 
you can change the stadium name and if you really want to get into modifying colors, logos, and textures, you can do all that too. But since this is a major league start, there's no need to do all that because all of it's done for us. Now the main pages that you really want to utilize would be all of your team stuff. These are all your team pages. Salary is an important one. Every one of your team pages is very important. And free agency, that's very important too. So if you had to utilize any of these shortcuts the ones that I would make sure that you use all the time are all of your team ones and the free agency one. And that's about all for this tutorial. You should be ready to go and start simulating and get started with your offline league. Thanks for watching.